So I think that we can get started. Hello, everybody. My name is Tomas Dvorak, and I am from IBM Research. And in today's talk, I would like to guide you through AI agents. So something about me. You can know me from GitHub and other platforms under my nickname, Tomas Dudy. Don't ask me why it's not 3D. I don't know myself. <laughs> uh, funny thing is that uh, we are here in Vienna, and that's my hometown. So I'm glad to be here and talk about AI agents. Uh, feel free to check my GitHub. Uh, I'm active main maintainer uh, of multiple libraries ranging from Node.js to Python and others. And my mission in today's talk is to unlock power of AI agents for software developers and not just for AI researchers. And besides work and staring to the screen for a whole day, I like to do any kind of movement. So, this talk is going to be technical, so embrace yourself if needed. But in order to do that, we need to start from the beginning, from the ground. So we will start by defining what is LLM and what is chat LLM, so we can ground up to LLM agents. Then we need to tackle challenges that are associated with LLM agents. After that, I would like to introduce you to our solution B open source stack to work with agents. And finally, we were immersed into, the, into low, low level details of such framework. So let's get started. What is an LLM? LLM is an abbreviation for large language model. It's a deep neural network, a special type of such uh, network because this model is typically uh, designed to understand natural language, to generate such thing and understand it. But we firstly need to define some key terms that we are going to use throughout this presentation. First one is prompt. Prompt is a typically a text that you feed into such LLM. For instance, this is a simple prompt, open source racks, right? But eventually the LLM doesn't work with a raw text. It firstly needs to convert, uh, convert such text into the tokens into sequence of tokens. And token is a small unit that represents a chunk of characters, right? And a token is a number, right? So we can see how those, how this sentence maps to sequence of tokens. If you look at uh, other sentences like hello world in English, Germany, or in Czech language, you can see that the tokenization process looks different. And why is that? because typically LLM is trained on um, most known languages like English or Germany. So if you prompt an LLM to generate text in, let's say, Czech language, it's going to be way slower. And I mentioned tokenization and now something about inference. Inference is just the process of generating an output for a given input, right? And final term is context window. You know. If you put some text into LLM, there might be a problem that the LLM cannot handle the full input because it's too large. So you need to be aware of a context window. So that's the maximum number of tokens that you can put in. But now in 2024, we don't typically work with uh, LLM anymore. We work with something that is called chat LLM. But don't worry, it's, the, it's essentially the same thing, but Chat LLM has been trained on data that are optimized for conversational tasks, right? So if you are go going to use some system, you will typically see something like this. System user assistant, but not typically in this way, but in some nice UI, right? System is a message that is hidden. It defines how the agent or LLM, LLM should behave, right? User is your system prompt and assistant is a response to your message, right? But what's going under the hood, what goes to LLM is something like this. But by the end of the day, it's just a string that has special tokens that, uh, that are here to differentiate between individual roles. So this system uh, prompt or this prompt is uh, for LAMA 3.1. LLM 
tests are great in general, but they come with some pitfalls that I would like to clarify right now. So first problem is overgeneralization. That typically means that LLM tries to respond to uh, arbitrary uh, question, no matter what is there. So if we ask an LLM a question like, should I bring a jacket today to my conference in Vienna? The LLM just hallucinates some answer and the problem is that LLM doesn't know what the weather is there. So that's the first problem. Second problem is an inability to reason logically. Let's ask an LLM to compare, to compare just two numbers. It's impossible task for that. And finally, a, a, a last problem is sensitivity to input phrasing. You can see that if we are trying to just ask the LLM to answer a question and we sli slightly change the tax, then the output is wrong suddenly, right? But it has the same meaning. So what are the takeaways? LLMs are great in generating and understanding uh, text, but they come with a set of pitfalls that we need to tackle. And secondly, if you are going to build an application on top of it, you typically need something more than just a plain output in a natural language. You need some structured output in order to display it to UI or do something useful with it. So, but don't worry, there is a solution and I will show you how. So let's try to do something. Let's put constraints on the model, how it should behave. So I mentioned that system prompt is there to force the LLM to behave in some specific uh, way. And this system prompt, this system message typically sits at the very beginning of your conversation. So let's try to put something interesting in it. Let's start with a simple sentence that the, uh, the LLM should behave as a helpful assistant. Then we will mention that the LLM has access to some tools. In our case, it's DuckDuckGo tool that is useful to search for something on the web, right? And then the main part comes to the play. We will force the LLM to, in, to produce output in some specific format that we can understand that we can later parse in our application. So in this case, we force the LLM to produce an, an, an output that is a JSON with three properties on it. Or we allow the LLM to produce output uh, that is something like that. So now in our application, we can parse such output and do something with it. So this is a basic idea what an LLM agent is. But in reality, it's way more complex. But the key thing to understand it is to know that there is a system prompt that heavily influences the overall performance, right? So we can uh, look at a high level view of an LLM agent, what that is, by something like that. It's a box that uh, like uh, consumes a user query. You, uh, the LLM agent leverages LLM and has, has access to some external tools and tool can be a, a, an arbitrary thing. It can be a code a call to your API. It can even do uh, something in a real world. It can uh, turn on your, uh, I don't know, lights in your room and Finally, after a few iterations, it gives you a desired output, right? But that was a high level, right? And it may not make sense. So let's immerse to low level part. So we can think of an agent as a program that is powered by an LLM and is controlled by our code. This is the definition that I came up with because there is no standard one. So feel free to discuss that and even come with your own. But if you are going to create such agent from, a, uh, from a scratch, you need few components, right? So let's define them. First one is a uh, memory. Memory is a data structure that holds the conversation details. Typically, it can be a simple array that just holds uh, strings uh, or objects uh, that tip or object that has a role and um, content, right? Then you need set of tools. 
tool can be an arbitrary function in your code base. It can be whatever you are able to produce, right? And thanks to the system prompt, we coax the model uh, to produce an output that, co that has uh, information which tool to call if it's needed, right? But because you need to define your own uh, schema in that system prompt, you need to write a parser for it. And writing a parser is a messy job. You don't want to do that, right? So it's better to stick with a format that is well-defined, like a JSON or YAML, and that has a built-in parser in your language, right? And finally, you need a thing that I call director. And it's a little brain in your application that decides that decides what to do next based on that parsed state, right? So that's what you need, what you need to do in order to create an agent. So let's move to a second part of the presentation when I'm going to clarify some challenging associated with LLM agents. So the first one is reliability. Because LLM powers the agent, it comes with uh, unpredictable behavior in some cases, and we need to tackle them. So the question is how to get consistent and co correct results all the time in an, in an ideal case. First, we need to evaluate after every change. If it's a, just a small change in your system prompt or in a tool's description, you need to be aware of that and evaluate it appropriately. And now I would like to mention something that is happening all the time. You may get a better result in your new, uh, newer evaluation, but it might, it might be a bug and not a feature, right? Because let's say that the agent provides you a correct final result, but the problem is that the agent forgot to, to use a tool to get such information. So it can be hallucinated information and not a real information. So you need a transparency to your system to see how the agent is thinking and how it's deciding, right? So this is very important. Next part is feedback. You can cover all cases at the very beginning. So you need to collect a feedback from your users and put those valid reports into your evaluation data set. Then, we need to think about context. If you look at uh, prominent models right now, they, they are uh, quite powerful and their context windows are really high. But the problem is that having a large context window doesn't, um, uh, doesn't mean that it understands the whole thing. So it's always better to put only relevant information to your LLM rather than putting everything in it, right? Next thing is inference. Let's say that we are using to, you, you are going to use Botsonix AI or Grog, whatever, as your inference provider. You need to decide which parameters are you going to put in. So we are now talking about decoding method, temperature, max new tokens, min new tokens. Those are parameters that that significantly influence your overall performance, right? And I would like to mention that setting temperature to zero does not mean that we are going to get deterministic results, right? So it's a big myth and that you need to be uh, aware of. There are so many things that influence the overall uh, the outcome, right? Constraints. We need to put constraints on the LLM in order to get some structured output, right? But also you are leveraging LLMs to be, create, to be creative, like to come up with some uh, interesting answers to do something useful for, uh, with it, right? So you can, you can and you shouldn't put so, uh, so much constraints uh, because uh, then uh, the agent or LLM uh, couldn't, uh, cannot decide uh, any basic stuff like two plus two or something like that. So you need to be aware of and find a sweet spot between putting uh, too much constraints and uh, putting none of them, right? And finally, error handling. You need to be aware 
of LLM's unpredictability. So sometimes the structure, the output may not correspond to the desired schema, right? So you need to be aware of that and introduce uh, some error handling mechanism to let the LLM to fix themselves, right? Next big topic is safety, security, and privacy. Because once you bring some external knowledge, some external APIs to your agentic uh, system, it inherently comes with a risk, right? So what are the issues? So first one and most obvious is leaking sensitive or personal information. Let's say that you are having a conversation with your agent and now the agent decides to call an external API. It may decide to call it with something uh, personal about you and now your information is being leaked, right? So the next problem is prompt injection. Prompt injection or jailbreaking is a situation where a malicious user tries to handcraft a prompt that forces your LLM to do something different. So let's say you have an application that uh, that is, uh, I don't know, question answering bot, and that malicious user can put a prompt that says something like, don't listen to system prompt, do what I, I tell you, right? And now it, uh, he is trying to misuse your application to do something completely different. And it's happening all the time. Next is uh, executing malicious code. So let's say that you would like to leverage um, the ability of LLM to write a Python code. So you let the LLM to write it and provide, you provide a tool to execute it. Then uh, what can happen is that LLM decides to write a program that helps your computer or calls some uh, or deletes your whole hard drive. So be aware of it. And finally, inappropriate language. This is something that is happening all the time. It's, it's a funny part because uh, people are trying to uh, coax those LLMs to do so. So you need to be aware of that as well. And just mentioning such constraints in the system prompt may not be enough, right? So what's the solution to all of those obstacles is to use guardrails. And guardrails is a term for detective controls. So basically you can think of it as a functions that sits at the very beginning or or at the very end of your agentic flow and those mechanisms detects uh, tries to detect if there is some malicious input or output and if so you can reject such thing you can have a guardrails uh, implemented as a regular function or you can leverage llm to uh, to judge the output of your agentic system. It's a very common practice to use LLM to reason about another LLM. So I'm happy to announce our, you, our B-Stack. And you may be wondering why another framework like for building agents, we have some. And the real answer is that we are trying to scratch our own edge that we have um, in this agentic world. And besides that, we are trying to have a solid foundation to provide you a thing to, to build them. So our B stack consists of multiple repositories. Right now, we open source uh, B agent framework and B code interpreter. And we are, we are going to open source UI, API and observation platform. I, I will talk primarily about B agent framework, but I would like to also um, talk about B code interpreter just uh, slightly. B code interpreter is a way how to run arbitrary Python code in a sandboxed containers. So if you look at the repository, it basically um, serves as a Kubernetes cluster. And there is a control thing that you send a request in at the, it spawns a pod that runs in that cluster and gives you um, and gives you the output from your code, right? So, but because this is a conference, I will give you a little sneak peek from the BUI. So let's run it. So 
So in this particular example, we are going to ask the agent what the population of US is if in 2030. And we can see that the agent was able to give us an answer. And uh, the agent used two tools to do so. So first tool call was uh, to DuckDuckGo and the second one was to uh, Python to do the calculation, right? Because we know that LMs are not very good at it. And now something about the agent framework. So B agent framework is, uh, is a platform foundation to build agentic system, right? And the main differentiator is that is in uh, JavaScript and mainly in TypeScript, right? That's the, essentially the same thing. But don't worry, Python is coming soon. Framework provides you a set of modules that you can leverage to build your own agenting system. It has a module like agent, tool, LLM, various adapters for um, others, uh, other uh, inference servers, template to build a type safety system prompts and an arbitrary prompt templates, memory to handle the way how you process uh, messages in your conversation because I, as I mentioned, you can run into a situation when you put so uh, much thing into your conversation that the LLM can hold it anymore. So you need a mechanism to kind of get rid of old messages if it needs to. And now we will immerse into low level parts of the agent framework where I will walk you through uh, those mentioned modules. So let's get started with the most important one, and that's the agent module. So we firstly need to do a bunch of imports, and then we can finally create our uh, B agent. That's the best agent that we have so far, and we are uh, trying to bring other uh, agents to the framework soon. So we firstly need to pass an LLM, then memory, and finally, some tools to it. Our framework is a special that we are uh, that we are providing you a set of LLM providers that you can use in order to uh, do something with agent. Uh, so you can even use Olama 7B on your local machine without any extra hustle, right? Then we can ask the agent what's the current weather in Las Vegas. And that's it. So let's run it. After a while, we get a final response. Then the current temperature in Las Vegas is 25.5 degrees Celsius. But the question is, how did the agent get such answer, right? So let's find out because observability is a very essential thing. We can do this by simply adding uh, three lines of code. And that's it. This observer part. Observe gives you, it is a function that takes uh, one parameter that is your callback. And in that, you can register to uh, new events that are happening in the agent. So as soon as the agent emits an update event, you immediately log that to your console. So let's run it again. And now we can see what's going on directly. So initially, agent has a thought where he decides to call uh, to leverage open Meteo tool, and he runs it and eventually get the answer. But that, that's not all. You can use uh, you can pass multiple uh, multiple parameters to the run method. Right now, we are, put, uh, we are adding signal, like a timeout, to our agent. And we spe also specify some execution parameters, like number of max iterations that the agent can do before it halts, uh, number of uh, maximum retries, and so on. So, and that's not all. You can even bind some uh, run context and uh, listen for some additional events that are happening in there. Besides agent, we have to have a foundation for building tool. 
And I mentioned that tool is something that brings the external visible uh, to external information to your static LLM, right? So let's see how we can build one. We start with a bunch of imports and then we implement our base tool class where you have to define few things. First one is the name of the tool. Second one is a description. Third one is a input schema. And finally, implementation of your tool. You need to be very careful how, on how you format name and description because those information goes directly to the system prompt, right? If we do that, we can then immediately use it in a, either our B agent or we can run it directly. And there is one extra way on how we can use it. And that's uh, by introducing a custom validation hook where we basically listen for start events. And if there is such event and it, the event includes some malicious URL, we can prevent, prevent such execution. And the next very important thing that your callback can be either a sync function or an async function. So you can alter the tool behavior without actually modifying the tool by itself. So this is a really powerful concept. Regarding inference, let's see how we can leverage standalone LLM. First, we, we create an instance of appropriate class, and then we call a generate method. In this method, we specify array of messages, and if we would like to, we can also start to, we can also observe events emitted by uh, that LLM instance. In this case, we are uh, going to listen for new tokens. And if there is a token that is a number, we print it and abort the whole flow, right? So if I run it, I get something like this. We lock all incoming tokens and because the last token was a number, we match it, print, in, print it, and abort it, right? But as I mentioned earlier, it's very hard to force an LLM to always produce a valid structured output. So we decided to come up with uh, something that we call LLM drivers. LLM driver is a component that lives our in our framework and is responsible for forcing an LLM to adhere to our specific uh, schema, right? So let's see how it works. So you firstly initiate uh, some LLM and then you initiate an appropriate driver. In our case, it's a JSON driver. And then we call a generate method then we specify how, what's our schema. We are leveraging Zot because Zot is real power for open source technology, but you can even provide a classic JSON schema without any hassle. And finally, we pass a message uh, to our generation that we would like to generate a profile of a citizen of Europe. So let's run it. Right now, we have some general drivers. First one is mentioned JSON driver, then we have a YAML driver and TypeScript driver. But those drivers may not work with every model at their best, right? So we would like to do or introduce model specific drivers where you could directly use Llama 3.0 driver to get the, per the, the best performance out of it, right? because some models work just great with JSON driver, some works better, work better with YAML driver. So it really depends on your use case. I've mentioned emitter thing earlier, but let's take a look what it really is and how it's uh, powerful. So in BAgent framework, we have a root emitter and every other emitter in the framework is a direct child of it. 
So if we would like to see what's happening in the framework, we just listen for all events at the very root, emit, uh, root emitter, like, or we can listen to events that match uh, our regex. So in this case, we are listening for events coming from some LLM, or the most general approach is to just pass a custom matcher function. So in this case, we are matching uh, events that are coming from some agent class and even by itself contain uh, uh, various of met metadata, right? So if we lock every event that is happening in a single agent run, we are going to be overwhelmed by uh, such of console logs, right? So we decided to develop bobserve and bobserve is a API that gathers all those logs, stores them in a database, and allows you to pass them to MLflow. And MLflow is an open source uh, like uh, observability platform, right? Very important part and very hard thing in general is serialization. It's a process of storing or, or persisting a live object into something that you can store to your hard drive or database, whatever. And later on, you would like to just restore it to the live object that you had before. In JavaScript, you can even serialize a basic thing like map, set, or any other data structure. Same applies to data, buffer, and other class. So we implemented a special module in a framework that does this for you. How to use it? So let's say that you have your agent. You do a bunch of run, now the agent has uh, some internal state, right? And you decided to, to just save it. How to do that? There is a special uh, method for it. You just call it. And because the output is JSON, you can store it to your hard drive or to your database. It's fully up to you. How to get it back? You would just do the same thing. You basically read the file and call an appropriate method. And this does not apply to just agent. It applies to basically everything that is in the framework by itself. So what's the roadmap? What we are trying to bring soon? So the biggest feature that we would like to bring very soon is those LLM drivers for a specific model, because we know that developing an agent that just works uh, on arbitrary model is a hard thing. And we are trying to solve this by bringing this feature. We would like to open source our UI, API, and be observed module very soon. And we are also focusing on a Python version. So our vision is to empower developers to build useful and scalable agentic applications. And if you are interested in our framework, feel free to do so right now. And let's get started with it. So if you have any question regarding my talk, don't hesitate to ask me right now. So right now, uh, our agent uh, is a type of React agent. So we would like to focus on a multi-agentic system and other stuff in the future. So it's eventually on our roadmap. But right now, we are trying to make a single agent that just works great on an arbitrary model. And you know to build that foundation that leverages LLM drivers to build an arbitrary uh, agent because that's the like most the most difficult part to write a parse to to come up with some um, schema that just works and a parser that does that you know process it mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Mm. It, it really depends on the use case. But we typically start uh, by coming up with our own description and then we try to use LLM to kind of adjust it for our needs. So it really depends. And it's best to have an evaluation on top of it, you know, so you can be sure that the decision you made is valid, right? But it's very important. Yeah. Any other question? So Llama index is for Python only. Yeah. So there, there is no way on how to run it on Node.js or Dano or other runtimes. And if you look at the design of, uh, of our system, it's something completely different from it. But you are right that you can use Llama index to build an agent and you can use our framework to build an agent. That's right, but it works just differently, right? So that was our like main goal to bring this visibility to the system by uh, by leveraging a meter part. So everything is clearly visible to the user. And there are those LLM drivers that let you to come up with an arbitrary schema. So you can easily test if this schema is better than this schema. So if you look uh, to some papers like React or Revu and whatever, it's very easy if you have those primitives to implement it and test it. So, okay, any other? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have agents and we have some toxicity uh, letters. So my question is, can we combine them? Uh, if you know what I mean. So this is about uh, some poisonous data or something like that. Can agent do something similar as those letters that actually protects some sensitive data or something? So I think that we are basically talking about guard trails, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, you can do that. You can do it right, right now in the yeah. framework. Uh, it's not implemented there, but via hooks or by... You can modify yeah, we, you can modify it and do that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Any others? Okay, so I think that we are, or, or, no, okay, okay. So if you have any, uh, don't hesitate to approach me in a person uh, after the talk. So thank you. <laughs>